Okay, so welcome everyone to this talk on personal development and psychedelics. Um, I'm sure most of you know who I am. Um, I uh, have been interested in psychedelics for some time, both experientially and academically, and hopefully we'll have a chance to go a little more deeper into some of my views and experiences in this um, discussion. And I'm here with Susan Gunner. And Susan, would you like to introduce yourself and, and a little bit about what this talk's going to be about? Sure. Hi, everyone. And uh, thanks, Cadell. So I'm Susan Gunner, as Cadell said, and I do facilitate inner work uh, through different modalities and tools, as psychedelics is one of those. And today we're going to talk about psychedelics, how it impacts and informs our transformation or change or uh, self-development because today is a very significant day around the world because we are making this conversation for uh, honoring the movement uh, called Thank You Plant Medicine. So today is that day and uh, you will see, probably come across a lot of videos online, offline, everywhere, people talking about that day. Um, and it is just to show appreciation and for allow people to share their own experiences, share their really authentic and their stories uh, with psychedelics and their experiences, their, their, their path with the psychedelics. So this is a very, very significant day and that's why we're here to talk more deeper into the subject. So thanks, Kadal, back to you. Okay, cool. So I think the best way to frame this conversation is just to maybe outline for those who are either just getting interested in personal development and psychedelics, uh, just what, um, what maybe we think about these two terms and how maybe we relate to these terms. So maybe let's start with um, personal development. What, what is personal development to you? Personal development <clears throat> means many things to many people, as we know. And uh, I used to believe self-development was something that you abandon who you are and then you choose or you become someone else, you become something else. Um, over the years, I realized that that's not the case. And self-development is just something that you do so that you can create a better understanding of the self better view of the world and how you live as a human being in this physical body so phys uh, the personal development aspect is for me doing the work ourselves so that we can be a better human a good human and um, support those people around us and you know the people that we interact daily and um, yeah just impact the world as as you know being in this physical body that's all it is really Mm. I think, yeah, for me, a lot of that rings true for me as well in terms of personal development. I think f for me, in, like the things that stick out the most are this, this dealing with be basically dealing with spirit or self in a physical body and trying to be the best possible version of yourself that you, you can be um, and, and how to put those into conversation today because in the past... I feel like there was a well or at least a coherently articulated body of knowledge that would see you through all stages of your life. Um, and all the stages of your life would have been well walked by many other people who go through um, similar stages of development. But it seems like today, personal development, self-development is becoming a more of a hot topic precisely because the old um, methods are less useful or less relevant and more people are exploring territories of self-development that were often only explored by, say, spiritual masters or only explored by people who you might call very enlightened gurus. Um, but now it seems like that's going mainstream. And so um, for me, it's just an exploratory territory of um, looking at the dimensions of yourself that are not necessarily highlighted or emphasized in 
family life or economic life or academic life and seeing what uh, those dimensions um, um, t tell you basically about the truth of your existence. Yes, I agree. Um, and I love that description. And, you know, uh, I heard this from one of the uh, guys that I, I can't remember his name. I should quote it after. Uh, he says that we are inherently broken and wounded. And we also inherently, uh, as much as we are wired for pain, and we are wired for uh, and drawn to pain uh, as human beings. Uh, at the same time, there is this innate desire within all of us, desire to seek harmony, beauty, joy. And we are drawn to that thing. So, and we, we seek that, whatever, you know, it takes. And I love that. And I think, like you said, it has gone mainstream because people are kind of caught in this wave of questioning who they are their existence and, and their happiness, the, the you know, the key, the um, catch word, happiness. I mean, everyone now seems to seek happiness, but that ultimately leads to, uh, for them to find acceptance in, in themselves. So I agree. And now it's, um, we are here. We are, it's a time where we explore other territories, mm -hmm. such as psychedelics. And uh, yeah, and so that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna segue into is that part of the exploration here, uh, part of the the say let's let's say the toolkit of self development or the toolkit of personal development um, includes many different um, styles and methods. And psychedelics, I think we both agree, is um, one of those tools, one of those methods that we can use to explore ourselves. So um, maybe just say on a for for you personally how, how do you um how did you come to relate to psychedelics and 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 uh, how how did it in, impact your your personal development yeah it's a good question uh to be honest i stumbled upon it uh through just seeking um different tools and uh, methods of helping myself or understanding myself so i actually found myself in the middle of inner work uh, unintentionally, but they say there is no such thing as coincidence. So there are obviously some uh, motives that drove me there. But I stumbled upon this uh, through mainstream, like you said, mainstream, me you know, social media, looking at different tools and modalities. And then suddenly it came into my awareness, started digging into it and I'm trying to understand. And I realized, wow, there is actually like a rainbow uh, of uh, many, many different psychedelics that to choose from to help you with your work and that's how just naturally came into my awareness and then um you know they say that once the intention is there to explore you, you always you know have that you, you do you do cross paths so it was just one of those things that i came into pure by just reading through and not really seeking but they're obviously kind of found me if you you know mm. as you said and yeah that's that's how we all started yeah it goes it goes both ways with seeking and discovering maybe mm -hmm. um and i think yeah for 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 me as well the internet is such a the internet is such a an open space where you can stumble upon anything and for me i stumbled on i think it was a band ted talk um about psychedelics and why anytime you see something banned then it, it you naturally want to figure out what it is so I, I stumbled down that and it's not like I didn't know about mushrooms or, you know, that I didn't not not like I didn't know about psychedelics, let's say, but the, the talks definitely stimulated my imagination and maybe pointed to uh, a dimension of reality that I had yet to really explore. Um, so I immediately became fascinated, but for the longest time, I just spent a lot of time reading about it academically, uh, almost trying to prepare myself um, for for the encounter. Because what I what I thought on an intellectual level was that it seemed like psychedelics were a a strange doorway or a strange uh, gateway into a experience of reality that was very foreign to me. Um, so I was, I was just, I was just natu I was just naturally curious about it. Um, but I, but I had no idea how it would impact my personal development. So uh, maybe you start, how would you, how would you say your life, your 
personal development, let's say before psychedelics and your personal development after psychedelics, what, what, what would be the main differences? Uh, yeah. And you know, I liked what you said. It's like you literally uh, go on this exploration, not knowing. So you get thrown into the unknown because there is no guidelines, right? In, in, when it comes to psychedelic. So, and <clears throat> what began as seeking to understand myself turned into completely something different through the experiences because as you said there is no guidelines and you never know where it's going to take you so at the beginning it was more of me who am i you know the hard questions you know what am i who am i why are we here kind of questions then um led into you know what's going on you know why do we even exist and so on so it's almost like again i'm gonna uh, share a quote which i love quotes and it said psychedelics are a way to break this world break this world rather than confined in it this is exactly what it became for me so the exploration surpassed you know wanting to know who i am into wanting to understand existence so and that happened in a very quick time so i'm guessing the traditional methods of inner work probably will take decades to get you there. Um, so this is how, you know, it kind of unfolded for me. Mm. So, yeah, just, just going on that, this, I, this quote you said that, you know, psychedelics um, help you break the world instead of being confined to it. In, in my deepest experiences, it's, it's kind of like the world what we call the world that that we're say feel maybe confined to or shackled within um is deeply related or is even identical to the structures of our own knowledge and on psychedelics all of that kind of falls off uh, at least i found like it, it all breaks away and 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 so your identity, your knowledge structures, which are of course how you're interacting with the world, how you're perceiving the world, all of that in the end becomes a kind of cage or it becomes a self, it comes, it comes a self, a self cage. And then the psychedelic experience breaks that all apart. And, and of course there's a tremendous range of phenomena and experiences that are independent of that that world cage and, and the world is even replaced by whatever this strange phenomenon is. So it really, it, for me, it, in terms of personal development, it really breaks you out of past habits. It breaks you out of past patterns, or at least it's not going to, I don't think it does the work for you, but at least shows you your, your, your deepest habits and attachments. Um, they fall away so you can get some difference or distance between you and them. Mm -hmm. And I always say it doesn't do the work for you of coming back into the world. You still have to build new habits and you still have to decide, okay, how am I going to make my new world? But um, it at least allows for this separation with, from the quote you were saying. Yes. And you know, that's great. And that's exactly what it does. It allows you to see the potential that there is within you or outside of you. And that is the real work because a lot of people confuse themselves that psychedelics will magically uh, change and improve them or, or turn them into something, you know, a unicorn or something different than who they are, but it doesn't work that way. In fact, like you said, it can show you. And then the choice is always there, right? Because we always have that choice to follow through. But the biggest difficulty or the challenge that I, um, experience was that how do you integrate that how do you integrate that and it's always like a back and forth experience of falling back into your old habits and then you want to create those new ones because now you've seen a different path you've seen a different way of thinking and seeing so how do you integrate that? i think that is probably the biggest challenge a lot of people experience with psychedelics and we're still not there uh, globally i think we still have a lot of work to do in terms of um, how do we now bring that to our daily norm, daily life and daily, you know, small things that we do. So that's always going to be the challenge. Probably I don't know how quickly that can shift, but still I find, 
I find that there's still a lot of work to do because even today, you know, that the uniqueness of coming out, global coming out, they, it just shows us that there is still so much work to do and there's still a lot of stigma. There's still a lot of confusion, uh, complications and misunderstanding of, of these tools. And I think that's probably why it's good to talk about these openly and but talk about all angles not just you know take one side and say because there are people who say okay they you know psychedelics is the way we everyone should experience it no no not necessarily not necessarily in my opinion i think we need to understand how they work so that we don't just go with the trend because the last thing we want is the uh, psychedelics to become a trend in my opinion right I think what you were bringing out there was the importance of rituals, embodied practice, institutionalization. All of this is, you know, still emerging or even in an infantile stage of development. Yeah. But I think that the, 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 the key point I would like to reinforce that you were making was um, just in regards to people who might spontaneously um, identify with psychedelics as a magic pill that will solve all of your problems and that you'll emerge on the other side as the Buddha and you'll um, be a natural, it's like a natural guru mechanism um, that you just take this cup or you just take this uh, mushroom and then all of a sudden you are, um, you are an enlightened spiritual leader. And I don't think that that is a healthy, balanced approach to um, what psychedelics are, I think that the reason why that view emerges is because when you're in the state, uh, you feel like your highest possible version of yourself. You feel like, you know, you feel like you could be some very uh, divine conscious entity. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, that's real. Um, it just, um, it, it just isn't what you necessarily hold as a permanent identity when you return to the world. You, you return to the world and you have still, uh, in my experience, the same addictions or um, bad habits or, um, you know, social problems with your family or your significant other or whatever it is that it, it, it certainly doesn't solve that, but it nonetheless gives you a doorway to what potential you have within you. And then the hard work of then translating that into like you emphasized with personal development and embodied practice of spirit in the body and trying to become the best version of ourselves that we can um, is I think the long road, which will require, like you were pointing to rituals, um, yeah. institutionalization and all of these types of things. Yes. Daily practices that you're going to build around it um, because your heightened awareness can, you know, help you do this, which is why psychedelics are probably uh, fastest way to get there in terms of awareness. And so how do we bring that back to our own lives? Because like you said, habits are there all the time because habits is habits are how, how we survive and function, right? So we're not here to eliminate everything like that. We just want to build new ways, new ways to deal with our social environment and as you know me i'm all about me the inner self the inner you know it's all about you know i look at my perspective is that if i can work with myself then outside internally then outside externally will kind of follow suit so i'm one of those people that would highly focus on myself my inner self my inner thoughts, my inner being, my behavior, and how do I interact with the world and catch myself? This heightened awareness now is like the, the most profound tool I can have. And they say, once you know, you cannot go back to unknowing. So it's a bit like that and you catch yourself and you can no longer pretend. You can no longer lie to yourself because then it's not you know, that the, the veil, so to say. 
uh, they say it's, it's kind of taken off you and you no longer can pretend and you've got to do the work. It can be still a lifelong work. It's not a magic, you know, fast track work. So it only shows you what's possible, only shows you what's possible. And then do you still have the courage and that desire to really work with the new way of, you know, seeing the world? That is the, the key um, question here with you mm. know, psychedelic style. I think I think what I think what you're touching on helps us lead into maybe our first reflection on maybe what the highest benefits are of psychedelics, and we'll talk maybe about the the benefits and the the challenges and the problems. But for me, with the benefits connected to what we've been discussing, is I think our default consciousness is aligned with sense perception, which uh, allows you to interact with the world or what we call the world. So we, you know, and they're outward facing. So I see the building across the street. I hear your voice or the construction work out there. I can smell my, you know, little things in my environment. I can taste if I eat, whatever, all these, I can touch this table. And my consciousness is aligned with all of those senses, but, and that's our spontaneous intuition that th this is what our consciousness is. But what psychedelics does is it really replaces that with potential. It shows, instead of seeing the world and the five senses, what you see and you take for granted, it shows you very closely and very surreally and very hyper really the potential. And so I think that then you basically have a, a question then when you like what we've been touching on, when you come back to the world and the five senses is, is my consciousness going to be aligned with the world that I've assumed is reality? Or am I going to align my consciousness with this higher potential, which I've been shown in these visions, but it's not necessarily that I can see it too well all the time. So there's that gap you have to deal with. And so I don't know what you think about that, but that's what I would say is one of the benefits. And, but then it opens up into the challenge then. Yes, yes, exactly. And the challenge there is that, like you said earlier at the beginning of the call, you said like, how do you, if, especially when you come back to your own norm and there are many people around you haven't had the experience and they have no idea how to relate to you in that way. So now there's a gap between you and them, the people that you perceive, with the world that you perceive, like you said. So in my opinion, I think it brings more work and more responsibility to the individual because there now, you, you know, you are required to be more discerning. You are required to be more accepting. You are required to be more humble because like you said, once you kind of have these uh, experiences with the div you know, divine and, and, and really kind of altered states. And when you see completely different world, we, um, it's the time to really humble up more and come back and figure out how you're going to integrate yourself in this experience and people around you and how you're going to sit all out without really losing. I think from what I'm observing in some of the groups and some of the, you know, um, people with experiences that talk a lot about is that they go into deep depression because they don't know how to manage this. And they feel even more lost because they come back and now they feel more alienated because now people don't have a clue what they are going through. So <clears throat> I think challenges right now, where we are at with the psychedelics, it's probably bigger than the you know, benefit, benefits because you also need a supportive environment because um, Imagine if you're the only person in your environment who had the exploration and experience, you come back. Um, it's difficult while you have a more supporting environment and groups where they kind of have the same or similar experiences where they understand and you relate to each other. So it can, I mean, simply put, one of the challenges could be that it kind of um, brings about more isolation 
because of the experience itself. And yeah. Yeah, I think that the, the, the isolation, the depression, all of these challenges you're hi highlighting can also maybe be related back to the quote you mentioned about the world breaking, is that um, you might feel alone because when your world breaks, um, that includes all of the people, all, all, of, the, all of the family, uh, all of the um, friends um, that are your world. So I think that the, the, the benefits, if, if the benefit is this ability to sort of see your higher self and the potential of it, then certainly the, 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 the downside or the challenges of it is being in a, um, being in a social environment that is not really capable of responding to the challenges of a of of a of a deep spiritual becoming right yes. let's say Absolutely. and so then you and and then so i think you 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 oscillate or at least i find myself um in the last five years say uh in a weird spot where you can oscillate between realizing the highest potential of yourself and and then oscillating back to Mm -hmm. the older version of yourself because it hasn't really been processed mm -hmm. um it hasn't really been processed through through deep work effort that's right so yeah. so we have this gap that emerges and and i think maybe we would agree that the only thing that can fill that gap is your work effort in the world would you agree with that absolutely absolutely your daily effort in fact i would say uh, and commitment to to the work it's going to make the difference and that's why um, we find that um, if the person is going for the experience for the visions and not really ready for the work itself I think that brings about like you said the bigger gap and the isolation and they don't know what's happening there is no supportive environment and they feel completely lost I think that is why we need to be very, very careful how we use these tools and, and honor it. My, my biggest, um, you know, right now, uh, realization is that we need to honor these plants uh, or any psych you know, psychedelic tools, that we need to honor them and how they work with us and be ready uh, when it's, you know, when it's uh, presented to you. So, um, yeah, that would be my biggest point to make here, that this is not, it shouldn't be taken lightly and it shouldn't be for any kind of recreational or any kind of, uh, it's not a party drug or it's not, mm -hmm. which we still, I'm very still, still to this day disappointed to sometimes read similar comments that, you know, it can be the case. Mm. But that it yes. can be used. That it can be used in the wrong context, or it can. Absolutely. That, that uh, what Tim what Timothy Leary always said was was set and setting, and um, at the same at the same time, Timothy Leary spearheaded a psychedelic movement that some people feel held the psychedelic movement back overall because it rushed to quickly into the intensity and the vividness and the hyper reality of the visions and was not as concerned with this return phase. And it's um, like he wrote a book called Your Brain is God. And mm -hmm. basically was saying in the book, you know, like you have access within you to be God essentially. And so it was associated, associating the identity with this hyper real state, um, which is possible, but uh, it requires forming a symbiotic link with a psychedelic substance. And it also tends towards the overvaluation of the hyper real visions and an undervaluation of your real work effort in the world, which I think is the corrective that whatever is emerging in the 21st century needs to approach i think through conversations like we're having through the through hopefully this this day that we're celebrating um 
and uh, more conferences, more uh, academic understanding. I think the, the, the degree to which I've seen academia move in the direction of studying these substances and taking them seriously is uh, overwhelming. And I think that it, it's a huge difference from what unfortunately Timothy Leary had to deal with when he first started investigating because he was a Harvard psychologist and he was, um, he was basically run out of the academic institution because he showed interest in psychedelics. So in some sense, he's a reaction against that uh, older mentality. Um, but now we have the, the, the opposite where the institutions are now more accepting and, and hopefully conversations like that can, can, can correct the, that mistake. Yes, um, and this is a great way like towards into um, accepting them as, I mean, I know many, many um, uh, tools, psychedelic tools that are used already um, helping with depression and, uh, and all kinds of mental illnesses, mental health, uh, something we can touch on because this is going to be the biggest suffering for humankind uh, in the near, very near future. And in, like you said, in, um, and the right, you know, controlled uh, ways of doing this can really, really help. Not so much cure, but at least manage those um, mental issues and mental um, processes that people are suffering with. So, and like you said, if if they if there's going to be more accepting of these tools, I can see the future can be the way we use, you know, these tools in in mental health, especially is going to be a huge benefit for humanity, in my opinion, for sure. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely positive and uh, heartwarming to think that we are uh, moving towards that. Yeah. And it's funny too, because now that we're having this conversation about psychedelics and mental health specifically, it's funny because in the gap between, say, someone like a, a Timothy Leary in the 1960s psychedelic revolution and the present day, what institutions did uh, try to do for mental health was often get people addicted to uh, different ca uh, pills and different, um, different, different pharmaceuticals, um, which seem to have many consequences of actually deadening the self and and disconnecting people from their self as opposed to um confronting very deep emotional troubles and and going deeper into the self so i think that the difference i see between why i would say the the last few decades in the pharmaceutical industry and and mental health and and the possibilities of psychedelics and mental health is that psychedelics actually open you up more to yourself they don't numb you or deaden you they bring more of an aliveness and they bring more of a consciousness and so ultimately ultimately i think the question i would ask to you is like do you think that this cultivation of aliveness and consciousness that we're searching for in in psychedelics and which is a great remedy for mental health of depression or anxiety or something like this um, do you think the ultimate goal is to be self-sufficiently at the highest state of consciousness and aliveness? Is psychedelics just a tool on a pathway to something more? Or is psychedelics an integral part that we cultivate and stay with us? It's absolutely an integral part. It's, it's, it's been there, you know, this as well for thousands of years. I mean, the indigenous, indigenous people, they they don't know anything else but psychedelics in their daily lives even i mean i come from a culture like ancient going back very back my culture also has shamanism and the the rituals that they used to practice daily you know they had witch doctors even two three generations back so they mm. are definitely part of us and we need to start embracing them again uh, for like you said, instead of numbing with external um, joy and external desires, external uh, you know, out of us, we need to embrace these tools and come back to us again, come back to ourselves, start connecting, start connecting as a community, 
and we need to stop this uh, Western way of living where, you know, the individual is literally, um, you know, uh, you are, you just, you know, you know, the Western way of living. We just been living, most people are living by themselves, completely isolated from the social or the community, the real community that, you know, that really thrives. And it's just the work home, work home, or the weekend, living for the weekend. I think this is why there is a lot of um, negative uh, uh, stigma around psychedelics, especially in the Western countries, because most countries who still have those values, they still embrace these tools, they still live, you know, integrated, and um, it is part of their life, daily life. So, I mean, in Mexico, look at Mexico, there's, uh, I heard one of the articles, like they begin to give microdosing to children from the age of six, come on, you know, age of six, mm -hmm. um, because they want them, especially those small, uh, tiny tribal, uh, you know, indigenous people, they, they want these children to be awake and integrated and embrace these tools from a very early age. And and there is this Western world where suddenly we discovered these tools. It looks like it's just something new and it's a, a magical thing that could transform everyone and give them happiness, which is absolutely the wrong way of looking at. Uh, instead, we need to understand more and embrace them and bring back the communities, bring back the inner work instead of numbing, looking for the outside joy, outside um, gratification uh things that we want and we're looking on the outside it, it needs to stop um mm. because otherwise it's just going to be a, a chaos in the future in terms of um have seeing more people lost and depressed and unhappy well um, i think i think in terms of like in terms of like civilizational development um there's a concept that was proposed by um, Ken Wilber, which is called Integrate and Transcend. And um, the notion there, I would like to apply to like what I see as one of the central values of, of modernity really is, is modernity, many philosophers um, associated enlightenment with individual um, freedoms and individual rights. Um, and that really structured a lot of our ideological movements in the last few centuries, of course, women's rights, um, different racial rights, animal rights, all these types of things come from that and is based on notions of individualism, but that each individual has the autonomy to assert their own destiny as they see. And I think that um, that's an important stage because there's, there's people in the pre-modern times who are in such collectivist mindsets that the notion that they're an individual and that they have reproductive rights or that they have, you know, right to dis determine what job they wanted, all these types of things are, were foreign to the collectivist mind. But at the same time, as you're pointing out, when you, when you take individualism to its extreme, what it leads to is the absolute destruction of community. So I think that to integrate and transcend would be to say, okay, there's aspects of individualism that are important. And then we have to, at the same time, to transcend individualism, we have to cultivate new sense of community. And, um, and that sense of community will probably look very little like the old style traditional community um who knows what it'll be like and that's exciting to think isn't it yes um but i would say that from my personal view psychedelics gave me a window into what that might look like because whenever i practice um or my most powerful experiences of practicing have been with shamanistic like figures and circles mm -hmm. of uh, men and women of all ages and kids. Mm -hmm. So there is a tribe vibe 
Mm -hmm. that emerges in these spaces, which is um, massively uh, appreciated for someone who lives an individualistic type of life. Exactly. And that's why, I mean, there was this uh, research done on um, indigenous people. I think it was um, about, uh, it was a, where did I hear this? Um, I think I heard this from Daniela Laporte. There was this thing um, they did on, um, like, they had to talk about their, themselves uh, individually, and they took a group of people from indigenous tribes, and they were embarrassed. They were literally embarrassed to talk about themselves. For them, that doesn't exist, because it's about the collective, it's about their tribe, it's about their community. They never even developed that level of, understanding of the individual each person and over here in the western world like you said it's all about us right it's about me there's me and there's you and this is you know this is my territory and that's you and i will you know open my door if i feel like it and and i'll just you know do my own thing so in those communities it was like almost a like taboo even to bring that individual person to, to, you know, under the spotlight, which I find fascinating. And, and the other fascinating thing is that in the West, uh, most of us, we think that the whole world lives like this, but no, there are still so many places in the world that protect this community life, the tribal, the contact, you know, the, the, the we are one concept. They do this very much successfully, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And do, but do you, do you think then? Do you think this notion? Okay, so we are we are one, and the self is nothing. I mean, do 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 you sense then that that's the model that we we return to? Or I mean, maybe we don't return to one model, but that seems for you to be the direction we're pointing that the that the individual becomes, it goes from being the king of the world to being irrelevant or at least subordinated to something higher? I think, um, you know what you said about the, if you look at the gurus and the enlightened beings, yes, they do isolate and they do work on the self, the individual, yes, but then they have the awareness and the tools to be also part of something bigger than themselves. So I think we will benefit from uh, having those communities. Like you said, we don't know how they would look like now, but uh, it would eliminate a lot of the sadness, pain, and loneliness in the world. Because in this physical human body that we're trying to live, I think we need to be in touch with other humans. We need to, because they are the reflection of ourselves. We need, if we want to really thrive as humans in this body, like confined to a body, then we need to have those healthy, supportive communities that we're in touch with, that they could support us. Because otherwise, it's, it's completely against our wiring. I believe that our wiring is to be together. Uh, well, our, then I'll just... I just want to say, I just want to say then in regards to this, this psychedelic uh, tool as a, a something that can bring about um, a sense of connection to the transcendent is that the data shows that in all of the different uh, startup communities that have emerged since the 1960s of people trying to create a higher sense of community, Mm -hmm. that the number one reasons why these communities fail is because of sexual and economic conflicts. Um, so the individual struggles with um, sexual energy, how it is being expressed, how it is being shared, who is, who is, who is being with who, basically. And then the economic dimension of who, who gets what, who, who profits from what activities, um, how is this 
communally organized. All of this creates conflicts and tensions and struggles that people end up privileging their own individual identity over the group and they go their own way. So yes. it seems like psychedelics um, has been likened to a very intimate experience there are some psychedelic authors I've read who would directly compare the experience of psychedelics to a sexual self-experience in terms of the intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just wondering, do you think then that psychedelics also helps us if ritually inscribed, communally inscribed, to overcome also these types of conflicts? I'm going to say simply yes. <laughs> simply yes. 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 Because we tend to complicate things, right? We have this complexity, inherent complexity that we like to make things complicated for some reason. And if we can understand and use these tools in the way that it could really help us and help us thrive, I tell you, it could literally allow us to have that simple and simplistic way of living and minimizing all this confusion and, and the issues that we're having now, it can eliminate all of that very fast. I feel like for, for, for me, I spent my PhD doing a, a, a thesis at an institute that focuses on complexity and evolution. Mm -hmm. And I feel like psychedelics, they're catalysts for um, complexity and evolution in some sense, but they also bring you to a higher point of consciousness, which seems in itself, in itself to be simple and eternal, yes. simple, and un simple and unchanging consciousness and um, undivided consciousness, you might say. Um, and so it seems like as the world becomes more complex and as the world evolves faster and faster, that what human consciousness has to do is the opposite stance, which is connect to the simplicity and the eternity within that we carry with us, the light and, and to bring that into the world as best as we can. And, um, and, and, and well, like you said, not everyone is going to find psychedelics to be that tool that helps them. There are many tools and psychedelics is one that perhaps we both would agree is a particularly powerful and a, certainly a, an evolutionary catalyst of sorts. Um, with huge social consequences. And so, so my mind is I grew up in a society where there's a beer store on every corner. And if I could die in a society where there's a ayahuasca ceremony on every corner, I would, I would see that as an enormous upgrade. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And this is a great point to kind of conclude uh, everything yes. you said. I, I totally agree. And another quote that I'm going to share is this. With psychedelics, this is... Um, how may we turn our passing illuminations into abiding light? And I think right. this sums up right. what we just, as you just concluded with the psychedelics, yeah. Because mm. all too often it's just the passing illumination, isn't it? It is, it is. That's what it normally is. It's just the passing illumination and then you, you have a hard time bringing it into the, the abiding light. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's I think that's a, that's a, that's a good way to conclude. So, mm -hmm. maybe just maybe just a fi final thoughts on this this day of celebrating psychedelics and its possible role in mental health and personal development and spiritual enlightenment is that for me it's it's after six years now of of deep reflection on psychedelics I can say it is an integral part of my path, which I am still searching for, but clo much closer to um, a balanced, ritualistic inscription into my life. And I think that 
what I hope for in 2020 is to find that balanced ritualistic inscription in my daily life and, and point it towards serving my more general habits. Yes, and that's great. Um, I would agree. And I think also I would say that we need, we need um, people who are uh, very good at integrating and understanding these concepts who could lead the way and bring about frameworks, bring about ways to integrate and help other people who found themselves in it, uh, whether they stumbled upon, whether they followed the trend or whether they deeply needed this, this help, the support of psychedelics. So going forward, we definitely need the help of those who lead the way, who have done the work longer and understand them and, in, and are able to embrace and also support the rest. So this is where we are now, now at. And I think we all have a responsibility to um, honor, respect and, and use uh, of these tools in, in the right way, in the right place, in, in, in a very ritualistic uh, way. And, and I also want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to thank you, uh, Plant Medicine Movement, and for their effort uh, to um, spread the word to the world today. I think um, these are the kind of um, steps that we need going forward. We, we need more people uh, bringing about these kind of concepts and uh, days or uh, acknowledgement days, I would say, to um, understand more and bring about more positivity to change because we are human beings we are inherently seekers we're not going to stop we're always going to go 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 and uh, and uh, and these tools are powerful in ways that could help us transcend and and unhook my favorite uh phrase is that unhook from the familiar this is it this is what it's all about uh, as human mm. beings, we just want to unhook from our familiarity, familiar, what we know, are known, and, um, and transcend, find that joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well said. I think I, I don't want to add anything to that. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that, that message. And I also would just share my, my gratitude for the, the thank you plant medicine and this day. And I'm glad, glad we had a chance to come and, and give our, our little, our little individual views. <laughs> yes, thank you for doing this, uh, Kadal. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so thanks very much. See you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>